You're listening to The Raw Reaction on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. You're listening to The Raw Reaction on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Hello, everybody, and apologies for the late delay. This is show producer Killa Kev. If you managed to be waiting around for the last half hour, just waiting for a podcast to start, congratulations, your wish has been granted. We are starting a podcast. Uh, the first one we've done in like three weeks, anywhere near close on time. So I apologize for that. You may notice you're not hearing the voices of Angry Tenzai. You're not hearing the voices of Big Dick. And, and let me tell you why. It's because last couple of weeks, you know, they've not uh, been here on time to do a show. They've had some events coming up. And they promised me that they were going to be here tonight to do a show. But this weekend was the Kentucky Derby. And Tenzai and Vic are like, dude, we got to go to the show. We got to go. We got to go watch the horses. Killa Kev, you need to come with us. Kentucky Derby. It's going to be great. We're going to be in the infield. We're going to be drinking beer and mint juleps. You know, just get your wildest outfit on. It's going to be great. And I'm like, guys, I can't. I, I got to work this weekend. I've got work all weekend long. I got bills to pay. And they're like, all right, we understand. So they went out to Louisville. They went to Churchill Downs. They had a hell of a time. Afterwards, you know, races over about seven o'clock. They're calling me up. Kev, where are you at? We can come by and pick you up. We are getting ready to have a party. And I'm like, guys, I'm at work. I can't do anything. So they're like, all right, great. Well, they decided to go take a trip to go visit American Pharaoh in Lexington. So they go, oh, they go, they go and they party. They party a little too hard. They snuck into American Pharaoh's pen and, uh, security guards caught them doing some, uh, untaughty things along with the Pharaoh. What can I say? The, the, the horse really is a stud. So, um, they, you know, long story short, they, they can't make it here because they're, they're not actually going to appear in front of the judge until tomorrow morning, um, when, when they get their bail hearing. So unfortunately, they, they couldn't be here tonight. So the, the backup plan was actually going to make this an old school raw reaction show. I had Frank Vaughn lined up for his return. Unfortunately, Literally just hours before the show, he was engaging in some roughhousing with his kids and his littlest one went to whip him around and Frank pulled an Enzo Amore. Um, he, he, he fell off the bed, bumped his head, had to go to the hospital. He's got an absolute concussion, so he couldn't make it tonight. So I had to scramble and, and finally pulling him out of the bottom of the deepest pits in Western Canada, returning to the raw reaction, it is the parrotless, shirtless Jordan Garber. Good evening, sir. You saw that shirtless picture on Facebook, haven't you, Kev? You, you know, me and all the ladies, we've we've just been beating it, dude. Yeah, man, that's uh, that photo was a Jordan J. Garber classic picture, but you know, a lot of great stuff going on with Jordan J. Garber. Finished off the. Uh, show right home here in winnipeg last uh saturday so minneapolis next saturday jordan garber's busy and that stop includes here tonight on the raw reaction on angrymarks.com absolutely so we're gonna try to run down some raw reaction as fast as we can because we know it's already late usually we're like halfway through the show already we ain't got time for the jibba jabba here we got to get straight to it and getting straight to it tonight was one mr chris jericho returning with the highlight reel where he immediately tells the fans to shut up and he starts on his rant about putting an end to Dean Ambrose. But uh, it wasn't the end of the segment of just Jericho bragging because Big Cass comes out to, to break the uh, 
I was gonna say eulogy, but that's not right. Um, not epilogue, not pro. I guess dialogue. My my brain is already failing me tonight. Chris Jericho was just running on, and Big Cass comes out and basically makes things known, and Jericho tries to just blow him off and dismiss him. But Big Cass is not a man to be dismissed. And I'll say this: there are not many people in this world that a man of Chris Jericho's stature has to look up to, Big Cass is one of them. And let me tell you, Big Cass towered over Jericho tonight, not only physically, but verbally. Uh, Now, I'll, I'll say this, Cass doesn't have the gift for gab, and he's not able to come off with the, with the quippy stuff off the top of his head like Enzo Amore does, but he held his ground. And the crowd really liked it and Jericho tried to start throwing his weight around saying you know who I am do you know who I am and Kaz just shut him down and said I know exactly who you are but I don't think you understand who I am and I don't think you understand what this new era is all about and what this new era is all about is I'm coming right through here and if you're in my way I'm just going to run you over if you don't move and that's going to be it. And Well, you know, Kev, uh, just looking at that promo on Raw, um, watching the highlights of that, I thought it was really well done. I like how uh, Big Cass got over, and uh, seeing Chris Jericho, um, it, it makes me wonder. It's like, how long is he going to be in the WWE for? I know he's been, he's been teasing, leading the company um, over social media. So uh, he always has his awesome... He always appears, and then he doesn't appear on the shows. Like he always has, like, six months off, off or whatever. But, you know, it's good to see that he's back, and we just enjoy him on Raw while we can. You know, and it's always good, too, to get that break, because we don't we don't have Chris Jericho all year. We don't have to deal with it all year. We just have it six months, so it's kind of like a, a treat for us wrestling fans. Well, you know, honestly, here's the thing. After everything that went down uh, with AJ Styles and, and this feud with Roman Reigns, I, I've not been too happy with Jericho, to be honest. You know, um, you know, I don't think he's really putting in his full effort. I mean, you know, hell, I am still. I noticed pi- that too. Yeah. I, I am still pissed that two years ago he did the job for Fandango at WrestleMania, but he can't do the job for AJ Styles. Come on, man, that's a piss. And, and you know, he won't let Dean Ambrose beat him. Come on, it's just pissy. You know, I, I'm not liking it, but Big Cass, he just wasn't having any tonight. He he told Jericho straight up, you want to fight? We'll fight. We can fight right now. And Jericho pussed out. And it, Cass called him oh, right out. Do. Oh, he's yeah. Like seven feet tall. Yeah, Cass called him right out on it, though. You are S-A-W-F-T soft. What about Hopefully that? What about true. Big Cass putting Jericho in his place tonight? Yeah, you know what? Like I said earlier, Kev, uh, definitely a great segment, and it was great. I I think Big Cass like pulled it right off, and he did such a good job on uh, that segment. It's good to see a guy like him working hard and getting the exposure he deserves. Yep, absolutely. So Jericho goes running with his tail between his legs to the back to Stephanie McMahon, and he starts whining about how it's unfair that Cass is doing what he's doing and all that. And then he tries to suck up to Steph by talking shit about Shane. And Steph surprisingly, well, maybe not surprisingly, basically said, you know what, Chris Jericho, you're right. You are so right that I'm going to give you a chance to fix it all because you're going to be in the main event tonight against Big Cass. And as Jericho just stood there dumbfounded, Stephanie said, oh, by the way, don't you ever try to drive a wedge between me and Shane again. Deadly. I thought it was great. Um, Raw has been lacking in the ratings department as of late, and it's definitely good to see this thing uh, happen again on Raw. Definitely uh, good to have a good segment once again, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I appreciated this simply because it's a reminder of the fact that Yeah, Stephanie and Shane have their problems, and Stephanie and Vince will have their problems, and Shane and Vince will have their problems. But what everybody needs to remember is that it's their problems. It's not anybody else's problems. And anybody that tends to stick their nose in McMahon business usually gets their nose smashed for it. So, (laughs) 
So just well, that- I remember the whole Bobby Lashley era. That was uh, another good time when uh, I, I loved that feud. That was one of my favorite McMahon versus wrestler feud was the Bobby Lashley one, and uh, it's kind of good to see that they have that level going at it again. Not the same level, but like I'm, I'm just kind of putting that idea out there to have like another Mr. McMahon versus wrestler legit feud would be awesome. Well, I don't think we're going to see any McMahon versus wrestler feuds. We're just going to see the McMahons feuding with each other. I mean, sure, Steph and Shane may be getting along now, but you know, eventually one of them's going to stab the other one in the back because they're all spoiled rich bastards. That is the truth. That's the way it is. So all we got about money. All we got to do is just sit back and wait for it happen. What we didn't have to wait too long though for was our opening match: Dolph Ziggler versus Baron Corbin. Um, this was a really solid opening match. It ran for about 20, 25 minutes. And finally, Baron Corbin gets a win over Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, great thing to see, uh, Dolph Ziggler putting the other stars over and to see Baron Corbin make an impact once again on Raw is definitely a great thing to see. And hopefully we see more from him in the future. Yep. The end of days pays off for Baron Corbin and Ziggler is left hiking it to the back with a loss. Um, so we continue on with the show. Um, speaking of trying to, to drive wedges, you get Shane, uh, Shane McMahon's office with uh, Charlotte and Ric Flair, and they start trying to butter up to Shane so that Flair can get out of being banned from ringside at the pay-per-view. Shane says not only is he not overruling Steph, um, Rick can just consider himself excused from ringside tonight. As the great C.R. Reed would say, Ric Flair got to have several seats. Well, yeah, definitely. You know, it's uh, like I said earlier, it's always good to put the uh, new guy over and to have uh, Baron Corbin uh, do that and make an impact on Raw to Dolph Ziggler is definitely a great thing. Wait, what? Good night, man. Yeah, you were talking about uh, Baron Corbin and Dolph Ziggler? No, we moved on. Did we? Okay. I thought you were, <laughs> I don't know. It's my, uh, my apologies. My roommate was getting me my uh, cable cord and I totally. They didn't even pay attention to that because I was getting the cord. So uh, my my sincere apologies on that, Kev. All righty. Well, well, we'll try this again. What I said was that Charlotte and Ric Flair walked into Shane's office and they started buttering him up because they wanted him to reverse the decision of Ric Flair being banned from ringside at uh, Charlotte's match against Natalia at the pay-per-view. And Shane not only said he was not reversing Stephanie's decision, but he said Ric Flair could go have several seats tonight as well. Definitely, yeah. That's another cool part of the uh, show as well, was that whole segment. Like, You know, like I said, I like what they're doing with Charlotte as Divas Champion, and uh, hopefully it continues. You know, she's a really she's getting over really well with the crowd as a heel, and uh, hopefully it continues. And it's always great to see Ric Flair on Raw as well. Do you realize Charlotte has held the belt for eight months now? She has held the belt for eight months, but think about it. She's new on the roster still. She hasn't been one year in yet, and she literally has the belt on her. So for eight months, that's pretty impressive. It just doesn't seem like eight months, though. Yeah, it doesn't actually. It seems like it's been so much shorter. But she's it's it's good because she hasn't had the title for two weeks. She gets to hold on onto it for a legendary reign, which is great. So now she already has this under her belt. Imagine what's next for her in the future. Yeah, so I'm going to jump ahead here. We're not going to have to do everything chronologically. Um, the top of the second hour was the women's champion Charlotte against Paige in a non-title match with Natalia Neidhart at commentary. Um, this is a fairly good match. Can't complain about it too much, but uh, interesting spot near the end when you have Natalia um, interfere in the match a little bit after... Um, Charlotte attempts to put her feet on the ropes to get an unfair pin advantage. Natty comes over and knocks her feet off the ropes. Um, so the two of them kind of verbally spar at it. And then Ric Flair just decides he's going to show up to, to try to run some interference. Um, Nat, um, Charlotte tries to, to get an unfair advantage. Doesn't quite work. Then Shane McMahon comes down with a boatload of referees to drag him away. Um, Paige uses that to, uh, get a, a schoolboy roll up for Charlotte to, to pick up the win. And Charlotte is just flabbergasted, almost crying over what happened. 
great um great job by sure. Like I said, it's very hesitant for me because I just watched the um some of the highlights. Not all of them, but uh what did you think about it overall, Kevin? It was an okay match. I didn't quite care for Ric Flair coming out on the end. You know, I thought it was kind of stupid. You know, could have saved that for the pay per view since he's banned anyway. You know, I, I I didn't think it was necessary here. They just could have had it where Natalia comes in and throws Charlotte's feet off the ropes. The two of them spar back and forth. Paige rolls up Charlotte. Easy win. They could have done it like that without the Flair antics. Yeah. Hey, it runs in the Flair family, though. <laughs> Rick Flair is dramatic, so so does uh, Charlotte. Yep. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And Natty talked She's a lot. crying. Yeah, almost. Of- Almost, pra- to her father. almost practically crying because, you know, daddy was still being dragged out of the ring and then Charlotte, you know, just, you know, so unfair, just rolled her right up and, and daddy's there making fun of her and talking shit on the mic and oh my God. Crazy. Crazy. It's Actually. Good. Chicks get like that. Speaking of crazy, speaking of crazy, our second match on the show, Fandango versus R-Truth. First of all, where the fuck has Fandango been hiding? I know, right? He hasn't been around at all recently, and now all of a sudden he had that segment on SmackDown, and now we see him on Raw. And what I feel, Kev, is that this is just going to be another, you know, three-week thing, and they're, they're going to put him off TV again. I don't think this is much at all. Well, I don't know. When when you've got a dozen people that all ask to be released on the same week, <laughs> I guess maybe you got to scramble for some talent. I, I have no idea where Fandango's been hanging out. You know, I don't know if he's been in mothballs or, you know, in, in carbonite or, you know, what they're doing. But he, he still looks pretty buff, I must admit. But th- it's intriguing what th- what they're doing here. They've got him teaming up with Gold Dust. And, and, and I think they're calling themselves, what, Gold Dango? Yeah. So, and then, and then you like got... That's literally amateur creative hour. And then you got R Truth, who is now buddying up with with Tyler Breeze. Is it what's their team name? Oh, I don't remember it at the moment, but it was something equally dumb. And they're gonna have a tag it's team match, like R Breeze or something. It's probably gonna be R Breeze or Reeze or something like that. I, I I think it's like like Pretty Truth or something like that. I I don't remember. I mean, th- this this whole thing just seems weird, and. and this was an okay match. It was basically a throwaway match. And they spent not the, the announcer spent like 90 minutes of the, of 90% of the time promoting the match is going to be on, on SmackDown Thursday. They're going to be in tag team matches on Thursday. So, um, you know, it w- wasn't a bad match. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what's the angle here? What are they doing? What are, what are we hoping to get out of this storyline? And, and worse, you know, I'm not sure who the baby face and who the heel is supposed to be. You know, cause Fan, yeah, you know, I, Fan, I, I Fandango guess. and Prince Pretty are both, are both heels, but they're, they're each tagged up with somebody who's generally a face. So I, I don't get yeah, it. Exactly. I don't get it. I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on here. And, you know I mean? and none of them can, none of them can go over as well as a baby face or heel because we don't know who the baby face and the heel in the match. It's part of wrestling. You have to see who the face is. You have to see who the heel is. You want to cheer somebody and you want to boo somebody. If you have a match and you have no people to boo for, like unless you're in Japan or you're having like a really, you know, it's going to be a five star match and it's a different, it's different. But that's wrestling. Hello, face, heel. We can't tell who they are, so it's not going well. Well, I mean, I'll say this. Normally, I won't complain if we don't have, you know, like a clear cut baby face and a clear cut heel. But what we have to have is a good, convincing storyline. We have to have something. That puts fans' asses in seats, and I just don't see that here. And without the fallback of a traditional baby face or heel role, I'm just not sure what they're going for here. So I, you know, I don't understand. But it is what it is. We'll we'll see how it turns out over the next couple of weeks. Uh, let's see. Backstage, we have Cesaro and Owens and Miz and Maurice all in uh, Stephanie McMahon's office. They're they're all complaining about having to be in the triple threat match. Well, I I should say Miz is mostly complaining because he's going to lose his title, and Owens is complaining because he doesn't think Cesaro deserves to be in the match. Um, Sami Zayn comes in and he says he wants to he wants to be in the match. So Shane is there and he says that Sami can face the Miz tonight, 
And uh, if he wins the match, it'll become a fatal four-way. Stephanie says, okay, I'm up for that. And and Miz tries to complain about it, and Stephanie tells him, hey, buddy, no one cares. Any thoughts on that? that uh, well, what's your thoughts on that? I thought it was just the basic... How much to it, in my opinion, honestly. Well, I think I think it definitely sets up some some interesting things. So uh, we get we get to that match. It's the fourth match of the night, and really, this was a really strong match. Um, it rounded out to the bottom of, of the second hour, and we it was good back and forth action. Miz looked really strong. Um, not a lot of stall spots in this match, I'll say, uh, but in the end. It's uh, it's Sami Zayn that gets the win with a hell of a kick. Yeah, great. I love seeing Sami Zayn on the main roster and seeing him make an, the impact that he's doing. And, uh, you know, hopefully he just continues to succeed here on the main roster in the WWE and isn't just another flash in the pan who just goes back to NXT after. And I think Z- Sami Zayn is proving that he does belong to be on the main roster on uh, Monday Night Raw. Yeah. And I'll jump ahead a little bit here as well. Later on in the night, you've got uh, Kevin Owens still bitching in the back about uh, Sami Zayn now being in the match. And Zack Ryder shows up and says, you know, hey, look, I beat you at WrestleMania for that title. I want another shot at that title. So Shane says, hey, you know what? That sounds good. How about Ryder versus Owens? And if Zack Ryder wins, he'll take Kevin Owens' spot in the fatal four way. How do you think that yeah, turned out? Well, I like, um, I, I knew WWE was trying to put over Zack Ryder a little bit in that match because, uh, they let him get a, get a few solid moves on, uh, Owens and yeah, he was back on raw again, but wasn't he on like NXT last week? Like he literally jumping between levels between weeks. It's so weird to see him on raw. Then the next week NXT, it's like, man, they're totally mixing it up with this guy. Yeah, he's he's getting some experience there. So to jump ahead a little bit further in the show, Zack Ryder versus Kevin Owens was our seventh match on the card. Um, this was an okay match, nothing to complain about at all. Uh, but pretty much you knew Kevin Owens wasn't going to win this match. You know, I'm sorry, as, as big a mark as I am for Zack Ryder, you just knew there wasn't going to be a spot for him over Kevin Owens in that four way. And pretty much, um, just when you thought Ryder was going to get the win, uh, Owens drops Ryder across the top rope, hits him with a super kick, and then finishes him off with the pop-up powerbomb. Thoughts on this match, Jordan? I thought like, the whole uh, Kevin owens Zack Ryder match, I thought it went really well. It had a good flow. Definitely one of the better matches of the night. And, uh, you know, I, you know, Zack Ryder can still go in that ring. And I think that's a lot of thing that the uh, that's the thing that fans don't realize is that he can still go when he has that opportunity. The problem is WWE just needs to give him more opportunities. Yep, there you go. Speaking of some opportunities, uh, Renee Young in the back talking with Becky Lynch about her match with Emma last week. Um, if you didn't happen to see see the match last week, um, you you know Becky has had an eye injury for the last several weeks. Uh, since the last pay-per-view, and uh, Emma tried to take advantage of that by poking her straight in the eye. Um, Emma says, uh, you know, no, it wasn't an accident. She did it on purpose, and, you know, I, I don't like it. And Emma comes out and antagonizes her a little more and, and tells her, basically, uh, you don't need to be, uh, what you really needed in that match is not to be making excuses, and you also need a set of eyes in the back of her head. And that was great because Dana Brooke then comes out and attacks Becky Lynch from behind and they beat her down. So your thoughts on, on seeing both Emma and now Dana Brooks on WWE Raw? Man, how good is it to see Dana Brooke on Raw? You know, she definitely made a name for herself down in NXT. And I do apologize for my voice. I'm just trying to be a little bit quiet. Um, but to, uh, see Emma on, uh, Raw again as well as Dana Brooke to make her debut, definitely good thing to see it's always good to see a young star succeed who's worked hard for it yeah there you go um speaking of a young star working hard uh we we get the darren young and bob backland uh promo again from smackdown darren young asking bob backland to be a, his life coach and bob backland is like yeah i'll be your wrestling coach and darren young's like 
well, I don't need a wrestling coach. I think I'm pretty good, but I've never had a life coach. And Bob Backen's like, well, I've never been a life coach, but apparently they're going to work yeah. together. So is, is it, do you think a Darren Young and Bob Backlund program is going to work for the audience? I think so. I like uh, how they brought in Hall of Famer Bob Backlund. Think about it. This guy was once a very long-running WWE champion. I believe the second longest of all time. And now to see him on Raw and SmackDown again, his legend is back in the WWE on television. That's pretty cool. That's going to help the Darren Young angle go over whichever he decides to do. And uh, to see Bob Hacklin back is pretty cool. I hate to break this to you. Bob Backlund was not the longest reigning WWE or second longest WWE world champion. In fact, I must have. Uh, he had a long reign go, when he lost go, it to uh, Diesel. Go, go back to your wrestling history. He is one of the shortest. He was the transitional champ between, uh, to pass the title onto the Iron Sheik. He was the transitional babyface to, to get the title onto Sheik. And then later on, he had that title for that brief period of time to to get the title off of Diesel. Oh, hey, you know what? Like I said, he combined days. I'm on Wikipedia right now. Combined days of 21,138 days. So I was pretty, I might have not been Mike Tanay with that answer, but I was pretty close because I was... For Bob three. Backlund? Yes, he had two reigns for a combined 2,138 days. No, certain. Di- I didn't misremember that, did I? Because I'm gonna be like, a, I'm gonna look like a complete ass right now. I don't need to look like a complete ass compared to Jordan Garber here. Hang on. <laughs> no, you know, I'm gonna tell you that that act, you actually got it wrong because he won it in New York City at a house show, and um, according to Wikipedia. Holy not, shit! Like, God, me. no, wait a minute, sir. Certainly somebody mis- somebody fucked around with that article. That's not right. Surely that's not. When did, when did he, when the nope. hell did he win that title? He defeated, he defeated Bobby Duncan in a Texas death match to fill the vacancy. December 17th, 1979, Madison Square Garden. He did not hold that title for all those years. Then he, the, the ring you were talking about was at, uh, Survivor Series on November 23rd. And that was a throw in the towel submission match. And he lost it to Diesel in New York City. And all right, God damn, all right, God damn it. He, he did hold that title for almost five years. God, motherfucker. Now I'm going to have to go back and edit this. The, the live audience is going to be the only ones who knows it's right. <laughs> I, 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 I have, I have the, I have the power of the editor. So God damn it. Now I'm going to have to go back and, and erase this whole fucking thing. Stick my foot in my mouth. God damn it. I hate you, Jordan. I hate you. Well, you, you still didn't follow me back on Twitter. I followed the, um, your personal Twitter account and you didn't do that. So you got to make sure to do that. All right. Fine. I only, I only just recently really reactivated my Twitter account. And I tell you, the only reason I really do that is just so I can talk to Abby and Jason, great Sudoku, when we're all up in the middle of the night watching New Japan Pro Wrestling. Bitch, by the way, why are you not joining us on that? I should probably do, be doing that, but I Monday to Friday I have a job at 11:30 a.m. So bullshit. Uh, We've all got jobs. I got jobs, and Jason's got job. Hell, Abby take has to leave for work as soon as the pay per view's over. You ain't got no excuse. You, you know we're all old people. You're 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 a young kid. You're you're what? Still 21? I'm 20. 20. 20. You're not even old enough to drink. You're not even old enough to get drunk yet. In the United States, anyway. I don't, I don't know about Canada. Are you old enough to get drunk in Canada? The problem is, though, is I did, that there's been many stories regarding me, uh, getting drunk. And, uh, there's been many stories. I'm not going to say them on the podcast, but. No, Jordan because Garber we're definitely not. We have some legendary tales regarding those, those good old beers that are legal in Canada. Okay. Well, if it's legal in Canada, that's okay then. That, that kind of debauchery is okay. As long as it's legal north of the American border. If you're South America. <laughs> No, well, can't. We're we're not we're not going to promote that kind of filth. But since you're north of the Canada, it's all Italy, perfectly good. If you go to Italy, the drinking age is 14. So that's like saying we can get a 14 year old to go drink. Like I don't know. I'm not really the guy that uh, has the deadliest, calmest drunk stories. So like, you know, they let 14 year olds get drunk in Italy, and they wonder why there's terror going on in Europe. It's because of these situations. Because 14 year olds are getting drunk. 
Or because Ke- <laughs> Killer Kev has fucked up his WWE title history. I don't know. Anyway, uh, mo- okay, so-, so we're, we're, we're trying Go to ahead. move. Trying to move on into the show here. Um, where did we leave off? Oh yeah, Sin Cara versus Rusev. Is there any future in 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 this Rusev versus uh, versus not Sin Cara? What damn it, why can't Callisto? Do you really Callisto, see any future yeah. left in this feud? No, I no. don't. You know, Rusev's gonna end up being like the Great Khali in two years, so you know it's not really much to see now. He's in the League of Nations, but. What's gonna happen? No, he's not. He says this. No, he's not. Isn't he? No. Yeah, he is. No, he's not. Oh, no longer. None of them Man, are in the League of wrong. Nations. None of them are in the League of Nations. Half of them are no longer with the company, and the rest of them walked off on SmackDown last week and said, "Fuck See, it, we're done." My work Friday. I didn't catch SmackDown. <laughs> listen to the rundown on AngryMarks.com. Yeah, we we need to get the SmackDown rundown back so you can catch up on that I shit. Used to no, be on that show. I used to be the star of the show. Now that's being a little <laughs> far fetched, don't you think, young just, man? Me and Nikolai, we were the stars of the show. We were dominating. We were like flowing on that show better than like Hillary Clinton's run as like trying to be president. Like it was pretty awesome. All right, you know what? You, you can't. This is why you can't be the star of the SmackDown Rundown anymore because you don't actually watch SmackDown on time. Get with it. I can't. I have to. I can't. That's my I, duty as a wrestling journalist. I can't. I can't get you a new co-host if you're not actually watching the show. Well, what happened to Nikolai? Let's just bring him back. He's all good. Well, Nikolai's not available at the moment. Oh, shout well, out. We're not going to do it right now. <laughs> shout out to Nikolai. Well, no, we're not going to do it right now because we're talking raw. We got to have to wait till Thursday night. Well, yeah. Are you going to be home Thursday I, night to watch I, I SmackDown we were, Live? Yeah, of course we're not going to do it tonight. I did not say that, Kev. Are you gonna, are you gonna, are you gonna watch SmackDown on Thursday? Yes, I'll probably watch that or the highlights. No, are you, are you gonna watch the show? I don't wanna hear, I'm gonna watch the highlights. Are you, Jordan Garber, going to watch SmackDown? Yeah. Can you, can you, can you make me a promise? Can you dedicate yourself? This Thursday night? This Thursday night. But it's on at 8, but then we have Thursday night AMP, so you know what I mean. Right, but that's okay. You, you don't have to, you don't have to be on Thursday night AMP if you watch SmackDown. Would you watch SmackDown this well, week? I want to be. Jordan Garber's like he's this uh, wrestling media guy. He got he has to get his voice out there, and uh, he wants to continue to do that. So Thursday, since returning last week on AngryMarks.com, shockingly, he wants to continue the good vibes on Thursday night AMP. I guess while well, he watches SmackDown. All right, we're 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 trying to get you good vibes back. We're trying to get to get a show back on the air here too. I'm trying to negotiate with you here, Jordan Garber. Will you pledge yourself to start watching SmackDown? Yes or no? Yeah. Sorry about that, man. I definitely... All right. Then, sure then, then what I want you to do right now, I want you to place your hand, place your right hand over your heart. Okay. Right now. And say, I. I. Say your name. Jordan J. Garber. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will uphold and protect... That I will uphold and protect. What are you trying to do, the, Kev? What's the, going on here? Recite the lines. That I will uphold and protect. That I will uphold and protect. The integrity of the Angry Marks Podcast Network. The integrity of the Angry Parks Podcast Network and Jordan J. Garber. And I pledge that I will start watching SmackDown Live every week. And I plan I will start watching SmackDown Live every week, even though... I just moved and don't have a TV, but I will definitely watch it online. And I pledge I will get a TV and a cable subscription within the next 30 days. I plan I'll not be lazy and actually hook up my cable. And I will watch SmackDown and faithfully report it so we can put the SmackDown rundown back on the air. And I will... You, wait, you want me to write reports for SmackDown? No, I want you to watch it. Say the words! Stick with me here. I pledge I will watch SmackDown and then do it every week on AngryMarks.com. So help me God. So help me God. Or Killer Kev will come to Canada and drown me. Or Killer Kev will come to Canada and drown Jordan J. Garber as he will not enjoy that. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. You have officially heard the sworn pledge from Jordan J. Garber. He is going to return. We're going to get the SmackDown rundown back on the air. We're going to start doing things right again here. We are going to make 
America Canada great again? Well, you know, we all know Canada's great. Now, the question is, will all the states in America be great? All the states and, in America uh, are already great by ver- by virtue of being America. Did did they not teach you this in Canadian one, history? Not the ones that are like hev- heavily enforced cannabis. Like that, I don't like those states. Those states that do that, like did that get mad at that, make me mad. Like Colorado is a good state. Iowa is a good state. Wisconsin, like, damn, that's a great state. I love that state. Ah, uh, you know, going to the states and seeing all these things and. It makes America wonder if it's great, and it is great, but there's always those three or four states that suck. Well, you know what sucks? You know what really sucks? <laughs> what's, <laughs> what's that? I'll tell you what really sucks. This main event that we've been avoiding for like the last 15 minutes because I've had to deal with this shit with you. This main event, um, not not too happy with it, I'll be honest. Um, earlier. I agree. Set, set up for tonight is an elimination tag team match. Stupidest fucking stipulation ever in a tag team match. Uh, WWE champion Roman Reigns tagging back with his family, Jimmy and Jay Uso, against the club. That's right. We're not calling it the Bullet Club. We're not going to call it the Baylor Club. We're just going to call it the club. They announced AJ Styles and Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson officially announced on social media this weekend they are back together as a team known as the club. They wrestle each other in an elimination match. Um, it starts off with Jey Uso getting eliminated after a couple minutes after uh, Carl Anderson rolled up, rolled him up, grabbing the tights. Um, Carl Anderson uh, then uh, tags in AJ Styles. Uh, after Roman Reigns get in, gets in the ring, but um, but Luke Gallows then tags his way in. Um, Reigns kind of kicks him around a little bit. Um, Reigns knocks AJ off the the mat with with a Superman punch. Uh, but th- then you get uh, Carl Anderson in, who insists that uh, Roman Reigns try to take him on like a man. Uh, Jimmy. Uso gets in there, rolls him right up for a three count. Uh, pretty ridiculous. Uh, a few minutes later, Luke Gallows gets eliminated, so that just leaves AJ Styles and Roman Reigns to go at it. And this was pretty good back and forth action until Anderson hits Reigns in the back with a chair when everybody was outside brawling. So that brings an end to the match. Um, so that, that kind of really sucked. Well, that's all I've got got to say about that it was kind of a cheap match we really didn't get everything out of it that we should have what did you think yeah you know definitely then calling it the club is just literally proof that they're erased they didn't really they don't really erase new japan pro wrestling but name wise they did because aiming at the club well what do you think why would they call them that you know what i mean it's just common sense yeah i mean this is kind of worse seth drake and by the way props points this out this kind of reminds you when tna called uh when when Hall and Nash and, and Sean Waltman showed up there calling them the band. I mean, really? That just seems cheap. And this just seems cheap. This whole thing just this whole podcast just seems cheap. I don't know. Um and I was completely wrong. This wasn't the main event. Thank God this wasn't the main event, uh, because this would have really pissed me off. Um this was actually match number uh what? Numbers number seven was Zack Ryder and Kevin Owens. Okay, so I guess this was uh sixth match in the show. Uh, completely losing track of everything now. Sorry, it's a train wreck. I've had a long weekend. I had absolutely, I had absolutely, I had a long, had a long weekend at work. It had absolutely nothing to do with Angry Tenzai and Big Vic doing anything in Lexington with with a stud. I promise you that. Um, anyway, uh, eighth match you had the tag team champions of New Day versus the Dudley Boys. Um, New Day had a uh, a promo uh, before. It kind of made you laugh. Uh, you thought it was going to be... Uh, they they uh, tried to call out the VOD villains as being old and, and slightly made a suggestion that, you know, maybe possibly they were racist too. Maybe. Um, but they pretty much called them, you know, leftovers from a bygone era. Speaking of leftovers of the bygone era, you know, match with the Dudley boys. Um, it was okay. Um, end of the match... Um, the uh, Dudley boys get the win after Kofi Kingston is clotheslined out of his socks. 
by uh, Bubba. So afterwards, the Vaude villains come out. They attack Kofi and they take him out with their with their finish, the whirling dervish. I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't know. What 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 do you think about? Name. It sounds like a spider level. Yeah, I know, right? Um, so what what do you what do you think about this feud with the Vaude villains and the New Day? I think it's great, you know, like I said, you're talking, we were talking about earlier about putting the, uh, young talent over and, uh, you know, to see the Vaude villains on the main roster, which a lot of people didn't think would happen a year ago. Now they're on the main roster and now they're uh, competing with the top teams. So, uh, win or lose, good for them. They deserve it. Yeah. Some exciting things are happening. Um, speaking of exciting things not happening, our main event tonight is Big Cass versus Chris Jericho. Except it wasn't. Because before the match, you know, God bless him, I love him. Dean Ambrose attacks Chris Jericho before the match, steals his jacket, gets in the ring, rips it apart so Chris Jericho can whine about something. And, and when Dris- Chris Jericho tries to, to, to walk out with his ripped up jacket, Big Cash shows up and just throws him around a little bit, throws him back in the ring so Ambrose can 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 do do some more and and hit some with the dirty deeds um and then they just leave Jericho there to to whine about his $15,000 jacket that's all ripped up. Yeah, hashtag Mitch the plant on this one. Uh one of my favorite things in this feed going on is this whole little plant thing. You know, the little it's just a little stupid joke, but I find it hilarious. It's just definitely one of those funny things that we'll always remember in wrestling, Mitch the Plant. I like him when they do that from time to time. Dean Ambrose is a crazy son of a bitch. Well, you know, is he not? definitely, uh, you have to understand that Plant is a living thing, so that does kind of count as when you're a little bit of a gimmick, so good for Ambrose. Yeah, but we got ripped off here with, with this main event that didn't happen. I, I really wanted to see Cass versus Jericho. I was excited because this promo at the start of the night Completely fired me up, and we got no match for a finish. And our finishing match for the night was Vaude Villains attacking New Day at the end of that. Um, kind of left a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth. Over overall, the show was okay. I'd give it I'd give it a seven out of ten. What would you rate it? I'd give it a seven point five. Seven point five. Even though I only watched the highlights of like seventy five percent of the matches. There we go. All right, so it was great to be on. So, final thoughts on the show before we get the hell out of here. Oh, great show overall. Um, nothing too special, nothing memorable, but you know, a solid Monday night. And uh, I just wish they'd go back to the whole two-hour format. You know, it's just much more traditional and way better that way. But this uh, Jason brings it up all the time. This three hours of watching wrestling, like fucking Raw, the same wrestling program for three hours in a row, is kind of. Uh, kind of shitty unless it's a pay-per-view so you know um the show can be slow but for a slow show it definitely uh ended well it was okay not great though yeah it it wasn't too it wasn't too bad i mean there's plenty enough stuff i could just kind of ignore it and chill out and talk with my family you know when when there wasn't any you know compelling wrestling on so and you know it wasn't it wasn't too horribly bad to you know well well, Speaking of um, good wrestling, Kev, I was watching a uh, classic match from the 50s. They're going way back to the 50s because Jordan Garvin needs to do his research. And do you know who the largest, like, I mean, the heaviest wrestler of all time is? This is a trivia question. Shoot. It's Happy, oh, it's Happy Humphrey. It was a match between him and a guy named Jack Armstrong in 1957 in Buffalo, New York. Okay. I thought I would put that out there. I just wanted to get that randomly. You know, I just wanted to share a little fun factoid. I'm going to start doing that on the podcast. But, yeah, like I said, overall, a great show. Who did you say it was against Jack, again? Jack Armstrong, I believe. Why does that name sound familiar to me? It does sound like a familiar name. It might be another name. I can't remember. It was a very old tape, so it's easy to forget the names. But I remember Happy Humphrey. I watched What Culture... He was apparently the heaviest wrestler of all time, weighing over 700 pounds. It's crazy. Can you imagine that? 700 pounds is like fucking like that in your face. Wow. Fuck. Okay, that's... God, God, God rest his soul. You know, he's a great wrestler, and, you know, he's really... Honestly, I've watched three of his matches so far, and this guy is the man. Like, he's classic. Watch some classic wrestling stuff. 
always appreciate the history of the business. Okay, Wild Man Jack Armstrong. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of where I've heard of him from. I can't remember. Let, let me let me go look up his career on Cage Match Net. Um, it's a 1950. That's the man. Okay, this may this this may this may be why I remember it. Um, one of his last matches before he retired, um, he defeated Mondo Guerrero for the uh, UWF Junior Heavyweight Title on uh, September twenty third, nineteen ninety four. Okay, wow! After wrestling in the nineteen fifties, he's still wrestling in the nineties. Good for him. Well, no, well, he made he made his debut in nineteen sixty three. Um, oh, so the match said that that match was. I guess the match was wrong. But, well, it's hard to follow like wrestling from under the seventies, so it's uh, definitely a struggle. But I always appreciate watching the old product as well. Yeah, definitely. And and he actually does have some WWF history. Um, he worked in in WWF as Lenny Solomon, hmm. and uh, looks like he uh, he did the job to a lot of the greats there. Um, Rocky Fitzpatrick, Johnny Rods, Arnold Scotland, Chuck Adcox, uh, Baron Mike C- C- Cicilina, um, Lou Albano, The Sheik, um, Angela Savoldi. There's a, there's a name for you. Angela Savoldi. Um, he, yeah, that's, uh, great legend of uh, the Northeast. Arnold Scotland was the name that you brought up. It's, uh, definitely yeah. a legendary name. Yeah, Scotland has several victories over him. O- over the years, uh, Reggie Reggie Isn't Parks. Like a top deal back in the day. Um, yeah, yeah, he definitely was. Yeah. But uh, he he did several stints there. He did a he did a, a good run in Portland wrestling as well. Um, and then later in his career, eighty three, eighty four, eighty five, he was still back as a jobber with uh, WWF at house shows uh, in California. So so yeah, I. You know, I don't remember any specific wrestling matches, but I, I maybe that's why I remember the name. Who knows? You know, definitely always good to get that little blast of history. There you go. So go go watch some Jack Armstrong matches. Um, also working under the name of Lenny Solomon, Black Jack, Super Scorpion, Ali Ben Khan, and Red Rhodes. So there you go. Wow. Some history. So Jordan, we get to the plug portion of the show. Anything you want to plug, sir? You know, guys, next Saturday, I will be, I will be in Minnesota for SDW. Um, for a, um, I was on the show last Saturday for CWA Wrestling, and uh, that was a great event. So check out those YouTube videos I posted on Twitter. Some great promos, including the debut of Jordan's Corner, when I interview live, cha- live CWA champion Bobby Collins, right in the middle of the ring, and everyone definitely enjoyed it. And I've, they were not happy with the outcome. But besides that, uh, check that out as well. And of course, do what's right. Follow me on Twitter, at Jordan J. Garber. I do apologize for sounding under the weather tonight. It's just a long day at work, plus being really, really tired. So one of those unfortunate events. But I cannot wait for the future here with the website. And I will talk to you all Thursday. Well, hey, at least you, you managed to show up for a show. That's all I can say. I you know, you you made you made it. You made it. You got here, and, and you made it to the finish line. That's better than some people are doing today. You know what I'm saying? That is true. You know what I'm saying that is true. It wasn't my wasn't the greatest Jordan J. Garber show, but it was a show, and it, can't, it adds to his collection of multiple many many shows in the past. Well, that's okay. It doesn't have to be the greatest show. You know, I pulled you in at the last minute, completely unprepared. Just because, you know, I made a dozen plans and they all fell through, you know, shit like that happens. So, uh, just to plug a few th- other things on the Angry Marks Podcast Network tomorrow night on the Undisputed Wrestling Show. Um, in hour number two, we're going to have Team IOU, the, the combination of Nick Iggy and Kerry Awful, uh, a well-known group of, of respected veteran wrestlers from around the independents in, in the Midwest. You, you, if you follow any kind of independent wrestling, you probably know who those guys are. In the first hour, though, we are going to be joined by former WWE star and former NWA World Heavyweight Champion, and I believe he is also the current reigning dub, uh, NWA Tag Team Champion, 
the Iron Man, Rob Conway, is going to be joining us. No way. I'm going to have to call into that. Jordan J. Garber might have to ask a question to the Iron Man. Who knows? Yeah, absolutely. So join Zane Paisley and Drew Skills and Mr. Morningstar Will Huckabee and our new co-host, Sign Guy, on Undisputed Wrestling Show. That's going to be 9 p.m. tomorrow night on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Of course, join us on the rest of the shows all week long. Glove Up or Shut Up Wednesday night with Stevie J and Peter H. to discuss everything in MMA. Once again, a really heavy weekend of MMA action, so there's going to be a lot of things that you'll want to cover. Um, Thursday night AMP, Stevie J gets to be back on the air along with the great Sudoku and our, our newest member, Abby, as we talk everything pro wrestling. And, and Jordan J. Garber. And Jordan J. Garber. How can we... For, no, it's not going to be Jordan J. Garber because, God damn it, you said you were going to watch SmackDown. Are you already... I'm break, doing both at once. You, you, have made, you, you, my... you made a pledge right here on the air that you were going to watch. Are you breaking your pledge already? No, because I'm going to be watching it on my computer while I do AMP. You better keep it up, mister. Yeah. You bet. You better not break your pledge. Because, God damn it, if you break your pledge, I'm going to drag your bass back here, and I'm going to make you register as a candidate in the rest of the GOP races. I don't care if you're not fucking qualified because you're not even a citizen. If Ted Cruz can do it, by God, so can you. California, Jordan Garber, or bust. Well, definitely. If I was president, the first thing I'd do is legalize marijuana because that's what should be done to today's society, in my personal opinion. I mean, shit, you're not even out there. I mean, shit, you can't even, you can't even vote in these elections because you're not American. You can't, you're not even qualified old enough to be a president yet, but by God, I will get your name on a ballot just to punish you if you do not do this show. Do you understand me, young man? I understand, sir. I understand. The producer has spoken. There you go. Thursday night AMP. It's going to be a great show. You don't want to miss that either. And we're going to end the week with Over the Top Radio with Ed in San Antonio, Craig and Cotrere. Talking everything and whatever they want, uh, pro wrestling, MMA, whatever it may be. You know, that, that's just how they roll. So that's our lineup. And, and in San Antonio though, like, why don't I do that for when I'm on the road? Like, why don't I do like Jordan and Minneapolis? And then it's just like a real 10 minute podcast. Like, you could, should put that on the network. Great. Well, there, sound bites and video clips. Well, there you go. Get it done, kid. Get it done. I have to do it this Saturday. Who knows? Anyways, there you go. Thank so, you very much, Kevin, for having me on AngryMarks.com. Not like I said, very under the weather tonight, but definitely check me out on Thursday night AMP. I'll be fresh, ready to go, and ready to entertain everyone listening from around the world. Absolutely, and you know, I know you're under the weather. Hope you get better soon. Speaking of under weather, I am going to give a special ch- shout out to my friend, my. Uh, classmate from high school, Chuck Rodriguez. He's not had too much good luck lately. So I hope he's listening to the podcast tonight. I hope he gets a little bit better. Uh, we'll talk soon, buddy. Um, so Jordan J. Garber, plug at social media one more time. You That's right. And follow Jordan J. Garber on Twitter at Jordan J. Garber. And follow Angry Marks on Twitter at at Angry Marks. Um, you you will see I have an account on there as well at Camnet, but you know, like I said, I'm like never on there except for the New Japan shows, and that just barely. So if you see a me- send me a message, I'm probably not going to see it for like two weeks. Um, you're you're just better off to send me an email. You can send me an email through the website, but nobody really talks to me because I'm just a damn show producer. Nobody cares, and that's all right. I'm cool with that. So I'm going to stop rambling at the mouth now. We're going to get off the air. Thanks for listening to the Raw Reaction on Angry Marks Podcast Network. Be very thankful we actually got a show out on time this week. Uh, Frank Vaughn, I hope that uh, everything is okay on your end and you're getting better. Uh, Tenzai and uh, Big Dick are hopefully...